2010 Acura RDX. I'm doing the front brakes. So what you want to do is get a 19 millimeter and uh, get your lug nuts off. Of course, uh, lift the car safely. We'll remove the tire. Now, once you have that all done, we're going to come over here, take a look here. Uh, here's my tools, uh, 17 millimeter, 14 millimeter, a brake, brake caliper piston tool, some, some brake lube, and like maybe like a flathead, a small flathead or something, something of the like. So what I do is I come in and get this 14 millimeter off on the bottom. Um, and I'm going to get these pads out. Now I'm going to do the rotors too. I was going to resurface them only, but they're too uh, close to the disc card, so I'm going to get new ones. So get this 14 millimeter bolt off. That nut on the other side might spin. If it does, just hold it with some pliers or a wrench. So we'll put that to the side. Now once you have that off, you can grab this caliper. And uh, you could just kind of wiggle and pull up. It might be a little stubborn. But just kind of wiggle it, pull it up. Careful not to drop it on your fingers. Lift it all the way this way. And then you could pull it outwards like that. And then just take that whole pin out with it. Um, and then just gently set it over this uh, control uh, the knuckle, the steering knuckles. That way the brake line supported, it's out of the way, it's not gonna fall on you. That's, you know, that's a good way. Now there, it has these clips right here. These clips gotta come out. They might jump out and fly somewhere, so be careful. Don't let them hit your fingers. And just a quick tip on these, I'm gonna probably say again in the future, but like they're, they're to spread the pads out when they're, the pads aren't being um, squished onto the rotor. And sometimes they wear out, the tension wears out. So if you're gonna reuse yours, just stretch them out like this a little bit. That way when you put them in, they're, they'll be pushing the pads away from the rotor like they're supposed to. So I got those set to the side. Now I'm gonna get my pad out, use my flathead. I'm not gonna be scratching the rotor. I'm just gonna be gently using it to push out the pads. You don't, you don't, you don't even really need it. This, I just do it because it's kind of more convenient to just kind of pop them out like this. Um, but you can probably get them out by hands if, if you are determined. Set these to the side. Now these are uh, aftermarket. They have like these aftermarket shims on them. I'm gonna be using aftermarket pads that come with their own shims. Um, but if you're using Acura pads, you might need to switch the shims over if you have Acura pads in. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna take this caliper bracket off right now. It's a, a 19 millimeter. My bad, earlier I said it's a 17, it's really a 19. I was just joking. But uh, we'll get these 19 millimeter bolts off. These will be definitely tighter than your um, caliper bolts, but we'll get these out, set them to the side. All right, once you get the last one out, the whole thing's gonna, bracket's gonna come off, so just be ready for that. All right, we'll set these to the side, pull this bracket off. All right, cool. Now the rotor is gonna um, be held on by some screws most likely, set that to the side. It has these little machine screws that hold it onto the hub. Now, in a perfect world, a screwdriver would be able to get these off, but 99 out of 100 times, they're so like rusted on and tight, you can't even get them. Um, so like this, this is what ideally you would want it to do, but it's not gonna be the case. So what I usually have to do is get an air hammer. I bought like a little baby one from the auto parts store for like 15 bucks, and I, I, I kind of hit the screw on the side, and then I'll unscrew it with the air hammer. There's a bunch of ways. I even have a video on a bunch of different ways to get these loose. Um, so if you're having a hard time with them, just don't be patient. Everybody has a hard time with them. But you'll get those screws out. I always use the air hammer when I'm in the shop. Um, but there's multiple ways. Check out Guillermo Auto, how to remove rotor screws. And then you could look at different ways with what you got. Okay, so we'll unscrew this. Got that out. Hopefully they'll just unscrew for you. Sometimes they do. Uh, I'm gonna remove my rotor like that i initially was going to resurface the rotor but um it went below the discard the discard is looks like 26 millimeters um so i actually put it back together and i measured everything and then i realized i need rotors so I, i'm going to put the new rotors in the video that i got so i'm gonna get rid of the old rotor here's my brake pads that's the part number i'm gonna put links in descriptions for pads and rotors and the caliper tool in the description to amazon so check that out my new pads are brake best. Um, I'm not gonna link these ones, but um, I'll link some good ones in there. Um, they come with a sensor on the bottom. They come with shims already attached. So uh, here's my rotors. This is uh, the brake best, brake best brand. Um, I'll link some in the description, not this brand, but basically the rotors should just, you know, 
look like this. This one comes with like some kind of packaging grease on it. So if yours has any kind of oily film or grease on the rotor itself, I recommend cleaning it with some bright cleaner and some like a shop towel or something. Um, it might be harmless. I don't know, but I just never leave it on the rotors when I switch it out. So uh, we'll go ahead and put this on. Put our little screws back in. If yours doesn't have screws or you lose the screws, it's not the end of the world. But, um, you know, it comes with it, so I always put them on. But most cars don't even have those screws. All right, so I'm going to clean the brake hardware. I don't have new hardware, so I'm just going to use a little wire brush, clean it. I'm going to pull this pin out, lube the pin. Make sure the pin can come out and it, you can move it back and forth. It only moves just like a little tiny bit, but just make sure it's not frozen in there. Sometimes they get a bunch of crud in there and it freezes the piston. All right, so we'll uh, get this back on here. Put our 19 millimeter bracket bolts back on here and here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. All right, I'll put uh, torque specs in the comments or the description box. Just keep an eye out for those there. I'm, I'm going to torque these off camera. So once my bracket's on, I'm going to put my pads on. I put a little bit of brake lube on the ends of the pads, just a little tiny bit. Don't go crazy. Um, pad with a sensor goes on the inside, sensor goes on the bottom. And that's because theoretically that's the pad that's going to wear out the most in that exact spot. So you want your sensor there because it'll start, you know, making noise before it the other side starts, you know, going metal to metal. So these just go in like this. All right, cool. I'm going to have to compress this piston. This piston or this caliper has two pistons. They both need to be pushed in at the same time. If you push one only, the other one's gonna pop out, so don't do that. Uh, I recommend this tool, it's called a dual piston caliper piston tool, and uh, it will it'll push both of them in at the same time. And this tool can also be used for uh, any other brake caliper uh, too, like a single one for like 99% of calipers. So this, this tool is the way to go. Of course, there's like big trucks that have like four pistons that need like a different type of thing, but you know, for this, lube the uh, pin there. And then um, we'll go ahead and put these little springs back in. Now, if your springs are good springs, they're gonna try to push the pads out of the whole bracket. So you need to hold them. You need to, Once you put the springs in, you need to hold the pads. And then with your other hand, uh, lift, put the caliper over the pads like this. Um, obviously, if I wasn't holding a camera, I'd have two hands on this, but basically you squeeze the pads and then let the piston cal or the brake caliper come down. Sorry for all the, the gaffes. I'm, I'm messing up words. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you could push this little caliper pin in and make room, and it'll come down. And we'll put our caliper bolt in on the bottom, the 14 millimeter. Now, when you're tightening this, if the inside spins, then just use like pliers or a wrench or a crescent wrench to uh, hold that, that little nut. Sometimes that'll spin, and guys think that it's tight, but it's really not. So you can hold it like that while you tighten it down. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, make sure your brake line isn't twisted or, or, or you know, messed up. Um, that's a common mistake. And that's it. Hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to tell you about this new soap I've been using by a new company called Quantum Soap. It's a men's soap company. They make multiple different bars of soap with their own ingredients and fragrance. They even have a dark matter bar, which is more grittier. If you're a mechanic, you have a lot of dirt and oil in your skin a lot. You can reach them at quantumsoapco.com. Free shipping on orders over $50. These soaps are made in the U.S. with all natural ingredients by hand. No synthetic this, synthetic that. Um, they've been great. They've hooked us up with a Guillermo Auto promo code. So if you head over to the website, type in Guillermo Auto in the checkout, you'll get 10% off. Again, uh, these guys are on Facebook, Instagram. Check them out. Check the links below. Thanks for watching.